Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for tuning in and watching this video that talks about oil quality uh, and v viscosity. I hope that you learned from it. If you would prefer to watch the emotional rant version of this video, go ahead and click the link in the about comments below. It'll take you to that one. It's a little bit more entertaining than this one. Also in the about comments of this video, you'll see links to other oil related uh, videos, some mine, some not mine. And if you like for them to just play one after the other, uh, click on my playlist on my channel and choose the engine oil playlist and that'll let you roll through several of the videos that I talk about engine oil in your car. The video that's currently running as my video of the week lists the top five ways to destroy your engine. Well, one thing I left off was failure to change your timing belt. At any rate, that video has stimulated some interesting conversations about engine oil, mainly the viscosity and weight of oil that people are using in your vehicle. And to be honest with you, I'm really, really surprised at some of the conversations I've been in. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm fine. My car is running great. The oil that I use is the proper type and weight. I'm using full synthetic because my car is turbo. I have no issues with the way my car is running. I'm doing good. So what you do with your car really doesn't affect what I do with my car. However, you're not going to convince me that you're doing the right thing with your car if it violates the information in your owner's manual. So that being said, I've gotten into a few interesting conversations about engine oil, and I really don't understand it. It's just kind of mind-boggling to me. It is critically important to the life of your engine and the wear and tear that you put the proper type of oil, the quality of the oil, and the right viscosity in the engine, or your engine is just going to simply wear out. That's just the way things go. If you check your owner's manual, it talks about oil qual quality. It has these API specifications, these initials, some information here, the viscosity table, which talks about your ambient temperature, what the temperature in your living conditions are, and what oil weights that you should use. It also mentions if you use oil that are outside your temperature range, that it could cause damage to your vehicle engine and it also talks about additives that should not be used unless recommended by your automotive manufacturer uh, dealership. So taking this in mind let's take a look at some of the oils that you should be using. I'm currently in the desert Albuquerque New Mexico. It rarely gets below 14 degrees and it sometimes gets above 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now, my car thinks that it is 113 degrees outside. With that in mind, what oil viscosity do you think I should be running? Should I be running 530? Absolutely not. The maximum temperature recommendation for 530 is 68 degrees Fahrenheit or plus 20 Celsius. Should I be running 1030? Probably not. The maximum ambient temperature reading for 1030 is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's actually about 100 degrees right now. But my car, because of where it's sitting, thinks it's 113. So I'm borderline on that. What I normally run is 1040 because 1540 goes off the chart to the warm side. And 15 goes down as low as 14 degrees so I could probably run 1540 in my vehicle year-round that engine oil weight is almost impossible to find in full synthetic so I'm actually running 1040 the other day I got a call from a guy that I sold a car to the engine was rebuilt the car is running great 
somewhere along the road, for some reason, he decided to downgrade his oil. I strongly recommend it that he run 1030 in the winter and 1040 in the summer. I get a call from him. He's having oil consumption issues. He's driving down the interstate using a quart of oil every 300 miles. Now, granted, my car has 285,000 miles on it. I drove 1,400 miles from Cincinnati to Albuquerque, New Mexico. My car used about a half a quart of oil, and my engine has never been rebuilt. So for a rebuilt head and engine to be running and using a quart every 300 miles, something is wrong. So I ask him, what kind of oil are you using? He goes, well, I'm using 530. It's a synthetic blend through Valvoline. So he's got this red bottle 530 semi-synthetic oil that he's purchased from Valvoline and he's running in his car. Why, I do not know. Again, 530 should be used in vehicles in extreme cold conditions with a maximum temperature of 68 degrees. I don't believe that Albuquerque dropped under 14 degrees all year, even at night, or under minus 10 Celsius. So what business he has with running 530 is beyond me. So I recommended that he switch to 1040 and see what happens. Unfortunately, the damage was already done. The input and the output shafts of his turbo were leaking oil and his car was smoking so he had to have his turbo rebuilt fortunate for him i knew somebody that gave him a great deal on getting his turbo rebuilt he got that done for 350 dollars but nonetheless had he not switched to the wrong viscosity oil he would have likely been fine conversation number two i'm having on facebook I guy contacts me and tell me that his engine is ticking it's making noise i ask him what kind of oil are you running well i'm using semi-synthetic valvoline max life oil that's 530 well 530 is too light for your engine i think you need to switch to full synthetic since your car is turbo and you need to switch to 1040 since it's summertime here in the great usa well, he's 2,500 miles from an oil change, and he doesn't want to waste that oil. So he's going to ride that out since it only makes noise in the middle of the day during the hottest parts and when the car is at its max temperature. So he's going to, he thinks it's a good idea to ride that oil change out instead of wasting $12 worth of oil and going ahead and changing the oil to the proper viscosity. I don't get it, people. It makes no sense to me. You are not going to get any internal engine repairs done for less than a full synthetic oil change. A full synthetic oil change costs about $38 if you do it yourself, maybe $70 if you pay someone else to do it. Right now, I'm using a high mileage full synthetic oil, 10W40. It's for cars with more than 75,000 miles on them. It's got these special... API service information on there and I'm sure this oil meets or exceeds the requirements in my owner's manual and it is a newer oil much newer than what the car came with 20 years ago five quarts of this plus an extra quart will do my oil change I'm buying my oil filters from a Volvo supplier they cost about $4.99 each, so for about $38, I could do a full oil change, full synthetic in my Volvo. Again, this person had a warning that his engine was ticking when it was hot in the heat of the day, but he thought it was a better idea to save money on an oil change and ride that out another 2,500 miles to see if his car would make it with the wrong viscosity oil in it. I don't get it. I really don't. Next, I meet a guy, stops through here to say hello, and he tells me that his car is making a little bit of noise. I promise you, 
I have nothing against Valvoline. I have nothing against their products. I think they make great products. But I swear, there must have been some nationwide sale on this 5W30 semi-synthetic red bottle oil. Because this guy had it in his vehicle too. He's traveling across the country. His car is making a noise that it didn't used to make. But yet, he's running the wrong viscosity oil in his car. He actually tells me that the owner manual recommends that he runs 5W30. Does his owner's manual recommend it? It absolutely does. If you're in extreme cold weather. But it recommended in average weather, 1030. And since he's riding across the country through the desert, in temperatures in excess of 110 degrees, he really needs to have 1040 or 1540 in that engine. I bet you if he switched it today, the ticking noise would go away from his lifter. Ticking lifters is not the only thing that will warn you that you're running the wrong viscosity. You could actually have the bearings on your uh, crank wear out. You could throw a rod. You could bend a rod. You normally likely will spin a bearing or you'll wear out the drivetrain up in your cams. It's just a lot of things that happen in wear and tear on your motor if you're running the wrong oil viscosity. I mean, really, I don't know what else to say, how else to convince you that you need to check your owner's manual and make sure that you're running the proper weight, viscosity, and quality oil in your vehicle. If you have a turbo, you need to be running full synthetic or your turbo is going to gum up and wear out the seals. If you don't have a turbo, make sure you're running the oil in there that has all of those special initials that your car manufacturers recommend. And by all means, you definitely want to check the level to make sure you keep it good. So, check your owner's manual. Run the proper weight and quality for your vehicle and stay on top of that. And your engine will last a lot longer than not. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.